Welcome to episode 50 of Lil Muck, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. This is a tiny slice of the Muck podcast where we talk to people in the media and politics about their favorite stories or experiences. I'm Tina Jaramillo. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Today, we are interviewing Florida gun violence prevention activist and educator, Tracy Merlin. Hillary, tell us about today's <laughs> guest. Hi! Hi, Tracy. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, you already, you're fitting in already. Uh, Tracy Merlin has spent almost 10 years as an educator in Florida. Her activism is centered on gun violence prevention, and she works to enact the change needed to keep our students, teachers, and schools safe. I Hi. wish I wish it were ten years. Oh, oh, twenty-five. Oh my God, Tina, I've God been teaching it, for Tina. twenty-five years. I can't have Let's you erase those team. fifteen because those kids yeah. are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Yeah, yeah. How, Tina, how I'm dare sorry. you take years it's okay. away? It's all good. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I don't know. I don't know why I put ten years. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we took the pay and divided yeah. it. Away, oh. Oh. It would be an affordable hey. salary for teachers, so we can go with ten years because that's <laughs> what I was compensated for. Oh my, that's Listen, a good I point. You. That's a good point. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Hi, so, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, yeah. thanks ladies, You're for, for bringing yeah. what's happening out there into everyone's ear. Well, it is needed. We saw Tracy a couple weeks ago at Sarah Leonardi's kickoff, which is, oh. was awesome. We need to keep Sarah Leonardi yes, on the Broward County yes, School Board. Yes. And I'm staring at Tracy. I'm like, why don't you just come on the podcast? And she was like, what? And she almost fell over. I was like, what? This You you are wanting to come on this show? I'm like, that'd be great. What did I say to you? I was yeah. like, let me take in this moment. Yeah, yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked. I was shocked. We're very, very, very happy to have you Thank on. You. Yeah, Thank, thank you. Thank you. We are happy. And we're doing video for the first time, so I'm like, leaning in to get in the screen but yeah, yeah come see us tracy's the star that's why she tracy needs to be in the is the star this yeah. is so good for my ego <laughs> i'm gonna have to come down like three or four ranks by the oh time i get back to my family oh. like, mom why do you expect us to serve you dinner tonight yeah like, you're a star you you're a star you deserve it all so tell me what age group you teach so I teach second grade okay. gifted high achievers, oh, and nice. I've always been an elementary school teacher. I started nice. in fourth, and then third, and then second, then third, then fourth, back to second, and I basically bounce around between seven and ten year olds at nice. that point. Yeah, wow. that is that to me would be a very hard age group. I oh. feel like it's a fun age group. Like oh they're very God. curious. Yeah, I mean, there is. I didn't realize the difference between the personalities in second grade and fourth grade. In second grade, they're curious about everything. You are, you know, a celebrity to them. If they see you in the grocery <laughs> store, oh, yeah, yeah. they're like paparazzi, like mom, mom, yeah. that's my teacher. <laughs> yeah. But in fourth grade, they know everything, and yeah. they don't even want to look directly at you to ask to go to the bathroom. I mean, yeah. it's like a very dynamic oh, shift oh, between yeah. second and fourth. But I, I love like it. I love it. It shifts because. I mean, in high school, when I see students out, they're always like, Miss Jay! Yeah, oh, you know? yeah. yeah. High school, I mean, high school to me is a special place that I do not ever want to teach. I do not think I could deal with many adults. Oh, there is oh, no way. I love... Yeah. I, I love the teenage years. That's oh amazing, God. and thank you yeah. for all, thank you for your service. Yeah. that's now what I say to educators. <laughs> for real, thank you for your service, Tina. Oh, same to you. Thank you. Oh, well, wow. let's get into it because okay. education in Florida is a minefield, and it feels like the easiest target almost for uh, politicians who just want to do something bad, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is what we're going to do. We're going to attack education, and as we know, I'm sitting at the table with two educators. Is that Educators have never really been valued the way that they should be monetarily with your workspaces. Now you bring in guns and uh, gun violence into schools and it just seems like they've never really had the backs of teachers or administrators or quite frankly parents to be honest with you the way they're decimating the public education system here. So. I know DeSantis runs around now with, like, they literally had a press conference where there was a sign on the podium that said, book ban hoax. And I was yeah. like, how <laughs> no. is he possibly standing in front of this? Insane. It's like yeah. literally the opposite of what's happening here. But he goes around the country because now he's running for president. How lucky for all of us. <laughs> and he's saying that there's not book bans. So can you first, number one, verify that book ban is real? And two, talk about, especially at your age group where kids are 
reading and getting like this is the age where it's really important so how is this going to affect students i don't know if it has your young students yet right. because the books are trying to ban but they are taking school, books out of elementary school how is this affecting your students as well let's see all right so so there's a lot there to unpack yeah and, and i'm going to start off with this although teachers were not held in the brightest light prior to the pandemic at some point mm. we became the villains yeah and so we became an easy target for the politicians and the groups that wanted to control the narrative of every component of education. And they essentially vilified teachers and we became the bad guys. I don't know where this came from. Mm -hmm. I have been trying to figure out, you know, and, and obviously in any profession, there can be people who maybe don't make the best choices. I'm never going to expect that every single person is going to do things right, correctly. Right. But when I think back to my education and my teachers, I have like the warmest fuzzies. I have such fond memories of my education. And I don't think that's the experience for everybody. Somewhere that has affected somebody making a decision about politics. Mm. Somewhere. That's my theory. I, I mean, you're welcome to run with it or not. But... I just, I don't understand how an entire mass group of people hates teachers the way that it's being perceived, mm. not just in Florida, right. but around no, the it's country. A, it's, a, it's a cultural thing and other countries are not like this. Right. And I think I've talked about it on the podcast before, like when, when my grandmother, who's now passed away and my family's from Italy, mm -hmm. when she heard I was going to be a teacher, like she was so thrilled because like educators were so valued. Yeah. Like that was just like, just really uplifted and it's the complete opposite here. Like here it's, and I think it started with like the, the conversations about like, oh, they have off all summer. Like, you know, it's all like they're lazy. Yeah. They just show movies. Like there's all of this, you know, I think that's where it started. And then it can, and then when COVID happened and the masks and these parental sort of groups starting to patrol the morality of everybody mm, right it's easy i think to attack the teachers because we we're in front of the kids all day right right and somehow now we're responsible for corrupting yeah. them yeah you know yeah. and and here's the thing if you talk about a teacher's responsibility in the day we are not just educators mm -hmm. i mean at least three times a day i'm called mom by a student oh my God. mom i mean i mean miss marlin right. you know yeah. i mean it yeah. happens every single right. day we're moms we're psychologists um According to the state, they want us to be police officers. We're yeah. not even going to get into that just yet. Yeah, but right. but the reality is we wear so many hats. And quite honestly, most of us are doing the best we can. And we haven't shifted. I don't have like a secret closet in my room where I try <laughs> to woke yeah. change I, it, my children so using God. wigs and parameters yeah. that people feel. I mean, it is like absolutely obscene. It's like, absurd. It is, it absurd. Yeah. It absurd is just, is word. it's like a comedy of errors, what is yeah. happening to education. But I will tell you this, the, the kids are the most incredible part. Mm. The kids are the reason that people stay. You know, we talk about a mass ex exodus out yeah. of education. Yeah. Florida is just, everybody is leaving. Right. And even and, and I do want to go back to like the vilification of teachers. I want to be very clear. My parents are super supportive of me. So what you see sometimes coming out of Tallahassee or coming out of the news is not everybody's lived experience day to day. I mean, when you say yeah. parents, we're saying the parents of the students. Right. right. Excuse right. me. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, my parents are supportive. And too. Yeah. Like yeah. Mom sure and dad. Yeah. I, right. Although mom, mom was a retired teacher and she was like, do not go into education. Oh, God. Do not go into education. Oh, God. Do not go into education. Guess what I did? I know. I went well, into education. That's what we do to our mothers. And then, like, my grandmother <laughs> on my dad's side was a librarian. I used to go help her in the children's library. I mean, so I come from a long line of just, like, maternal caregiving yeah. people. And that is my expertise. And have you seen, with the book bands, has, you know, your particular school had to pull books that were you asked to go through books that you have in your classroom you know when the hurricane's coming and everybody runs to home depot and yeah. Publix, it's coming yeah mm -hmm. um books have been banned you can yeah. fo you can follow florida reads project i mean right. for goodness sakes judy bloom jody picolt like you can follow all of these authors this is not just like made up hypothesis that yeah. perhaps maybe if you look at what's happening on social media, I do think that sometimes the truth is stretched a little bit on both sides of the issue. But mm -hmm. the reality is, yes, there are books that are banned. I know that um, 
I've done, you know, so many things to always uplift and include different cultures, different things in my classroom. And now we sort of think twice about things, mm. right? It's, right? And that's like a scary place to be right. in because if I've done a unit on Ruby Bridges and it matches my standards and then you find out that there's other places in Florida where teachers are being told to pull the books, it's like, I don't want to have a target, but at the same time, my children need to know about the history Otherwise, you know the saying, right? right? Words need right. to repeat it, and it's like my history as a as a as a personal person in the profession was always about you don't draw the conclusions for the kids. You present them with the right. facts, mm -hmm. and they are the ones who have the conversations. They are the ones who have the debate. You help facilitate that. But I, when I'm in my classroom, I am not as outspoken or activist -y. that is no. like a completely different role because, that I play. Of course. And that's the yeah. thing is oh, that God. for whatever reason teachers have always been held to the standard that is different than everybody else and you can be one thing in your class. You could be a professional and then you have your outside life and most I would say almost every teacher I know does not bring their personal life into the classroom because you're teaching your curriculum. Absolutely. Right? And you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times my students were like, oh, tell me about that. And I'm always like, that's personal. Sorry. You know, or they'll, they try to add, and I'm like, sorry, yeah. we don't have it. That's, we don't, that's not, because they, first of all, they want to derail the conversation. Anyway, yeah. they can to move away from the sure. curriculum, right? <laughs> so, that's like a high school thing, right? Because yeah, in mine, they're like, wait, I have to tell you something about yeah, it. <laughs> you know, but the, I just, it's very disappointing that people who have gone to college and studied and and know their subject, know their their curriculum, know what they're doing, and gone through professional development and all of this. And we are not trusted oh. to teach. Listen. You would never do that to any other profession. Mm. Walk in and tell someone how to be an accountant or how to be a contractor or how to do whatever. How to be a surgeon. But, right. We've they're got... not doing it. But somehow they think that they know more. And I'm sorry, but no. You know, it, it's, a, it's amazing that so many people think we're glorified babysitters, but here's the reality. I went to school, go Gators, and got my degree, <laughs> then I stayed for my master's, then I went and did national board, which is essentially like getting yes. a doctorate, yes. and it was a tremendous, a tremendous amount of professionalism, time in academia. Here's the bottom line. The people who are making decisions about education have no clue. <laughs> yeah, have no clue. They've never even been in a classroom. Have no clue. Except, never even been in a classroom. I'm just yep. going to say um, S Senator Jones knows because he's done oh, yeah. it. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm going to give him a special shout out there. But like, and, and, you know, and Senator Book knows because yeah. she's done it. Like, there are people who are making decisions about things. Like, would you have me... Would you have me run the military? No. No. I mean, I but said, I but, I, but I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's right. the mentality right. I mean, that we. That's have. what I've said to Tina when I hear about these parents who are like, "This is what the teacher should do." This, I, I, I would never even. I don't. I work in an office. Like I would never even attempt to be like, "I know more than what the teacher knows." That makes no sense to me. And I think the way that, or the reason why it's an easy target now is because children are involved, and so what they do is what they always do. The bad guys is that they put fear in parents that something's going to happen to your kids, and so that's how they galvanize people. Mm -hmm. Except when it comes to guns, oh, right? <laughs> because right. when that happens, exactly. that's Thanks the only for thing. Going yeah, there. that's yeah. the only thing that they can't get on the same page with when it comes to kids you know what I mean right just so, shocking so speaking of that right army teachers has been suggested as a potential solution to right. school shootings so what is your perspective on that proposal what other strategies do you think would be more effective in ensuring student safety? Okay, so I just want to recognize that this is um, Wear Orange, yeah. which is an opportunity for people to support gun violence prevention, no matter what organization you're with or not with, whether you're a gun owner or not in favor of guns. We can all come together and decide that we don't want children getting shot, yet <laughs> that is the number one, mm. the number one way that children die in this country and just like anything else that happens that's dangerous we need our congress to address this um, i do want to let you know that in dc coming up on the 6th i do know that um, samuel schwartz is having a sit-in so that congress will act and come to a vote on an assault weapons ban mm. that is the number one thing that needs to happen 
And if Congress doesn't act, then President Biden, just like he would with any other emergency, needs to be using his executive actions to address this. Oh, yeah. Needs to address this because you know what? It's it is one thing to have the ability to arm yourself. But when we start talking about the children, when we start talking about why are the parents so worried about these books, yeah. it's ironic that they want to arm teachers, yet they tie our arms behind yeah, right. our back with yeah. curriculum it's, and choice it's, it's and insane. professionalism. They don't trust us to, 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 teach. to teach, but you're going to trust us with a weapon. It's, it's insane. It's beyond it's, it's, insane. If your house was burning down and you give me a squirt gun, I'm not going to fix the problem. Mm. And so arming teachers is not the answer. More guns is not the answer. We need to address the problem head on as a country. We have a lot of work that we need to be doing. And one of the things that we need to do is have common sense gun laws. We need to be talking about safe storage. I think it's like 76% mm. of school shooters are getting their guns from their home. There are things that yeah. can be done with safe storage laws that save lives. If you follow the songs, they lost their son to a neighbor. They were looking at guns and he was shot. I oh mean, God. there are things that can be done for safe storage. When I use my iPhone, I have to unlock it with my finger. It's not million dollar technology for mm -hmm. me to do that. But yet we're working on gun locks and gun safes that are from a long time ago because people are not investing in it. We have what was called a crisis in America and it's not just in Florida, but now you have Tallahassee that just passed, I'm sorry, our Supreme Leader just passed the um, permitless carry, which Ooh. essentially- oh. oh my God, it's crazy. The homicide rate in states that pass permitless carry goes up over, I think it was like 22 or 20, I'm not great with numbers on a Saturday, right. I'm not gonna lie, but, but it goes up like 22, 24%. So we have people who are angry a yeah. lot of angry people in this state. They're, and the idea of them being armed when we're out in right. the world. I mean, when, it's especially you just hear several stories. And again, somebody, and I think it was in Florida, pulled in again, oh, yeah. pulled into a driveway because they were had to back up and go out. And the guy came out with a gun to shoot this person. And the neighbor came out and go, no, no, she's looking for my house. Right. Like, this is what we're doing. Like, somebody pulls up to your house because clearly they're lost. We're going to kill them. I just Th there's we are sick. We are we are more than sick. And I I just wish that the reality that people could sort of experience what it's like to be in a drill mm. with yeah. 20 second graders. I, I've oh. sort of told this story as many times as people will listen because I think it doesn't necessarily do it justice when you realize that an elementary school student, right? Like so if you have a kindergartner right now, they will have gone through 60 60, 60 active shooter trainings by the time they leave fifth grade. What? 60 yeah. times in their education, we are telling them that guns are more important than your life. You're going to huddle in a bathroom. Yeah. You're going to stop. You're not going to speak. You're not going to make noise. We think it's a practice, right? Because they're really good about communication. We think it's a practice, but essentially you are telling a student 60 times. And many parents at this day and age, I know you guys have kids that are a little bit older, I mean, my daughter was like seven years old and I told her, if you hear sounds that sound like firecrackers and mom you know, uses this word, that means we gotta go now. This is what we're dealing with. We have people who are sending out warnings about coming to Florida. We have people yeah. sending out warnings that it's not safe. I mean, how is this our reality? Because this is not what we grew up with. This is not what we want for our kids. And we know it's not necessary. Like there are things you can do so we don't have to live this way. We don't have to live this right. way. And so why is it so hard? They passed the assault weapons ban in the House. Am I right? In the U.S. House. And they have to do it in the Senate. Like, they, didn't they pass it there? I, I apologize that I don't have that fact. No, I believe right they now, did. They were still they, need to have a vote. Yeah, they yeah. celebrated it. They sent it to the Senate. It's sitting there. Right. Like, it's not, nothing's happening with it. Like, And that's and, an easy thing. That's yeah. saying to people, look, have you want to be protected and you want to have your handgun, have your handgun. But military grade weapons, like I don't understand why we can't start there. I don't understand what person needs to have that kind of weapon because you can't go hunting with it. Yeah. You can't you the only the sole purpose of that is to destroy. Yes. But I love this safe storage. Like I don't even know why I didn't consider it because actually this week in Broward County, a little girl got her hand on her dad's gun and she got she shot herself. Now it was like an accident she was handling it. I wanna say she was like a toddler. And it just like this oh just God. happened this week. 
because they don't have why can't we do that why is that like no, that's not taking your guns away it's just putting it in a safer Absolutely. place right why can, is that not a thing that's a possibility here to lessen this i mean it just makes zero sense for what purpose and sh i'm gonna tell you not that many people are voting based on guns come on well, oh, I mean, I what know. do you think? There's a lot. Know. There's a lot going on in this state. But I just want to go back to Tina's point. It says new polling. New polling shows that Americans believe an assault weapons ban will have the most impact on reducing gun violence in the U.S. More of an impact than mental health screenings. Hmm. More of an impact than background checks. More of an impact than red flag laws, which in Florida have been used so many times, right. and we've had so many. Right. And more of an impact than arming teachers. That's the majority of Americans feel that way. And it's like we're sitting on our hands, debilitating ourselves. Because it's infuriating. We, because, because this small number of people who have managed to rig the system to keep their seats are destroying this country to line their pockets and it's disgusting yeah but here's the thing like we're sitting here on a saturday morning yeah. talking about this and then i think about people like anna eskimani mm, or maxwell yeah. frost so i think about the people yeah. who are out there you know i mean we have so many phenomenally motivated people in this state right. that are trying to make the change and it's it's infuriating to see the legislation just get railroaded over by the people who are making these choices, and I don't think it is representing the majority at it's all. It's absolutely not. That's what I mean. I mean, if the very least Republicans can come on the side of assault banning assault weapons, it would make a huge difference. And uh, I mean, I was saying on the podcast today on a regular episode that we just had a shooting on Hollywood Beach in on Memorial Day, and President to say. Oh my God! I just, right. Supreme, I just God, you know what? Poo poo on that. That is like not what we're looking that? for here. Look at Tina's look on her face. Yeah, that's not cool. Woo. I've already convinced oh, myself. God, did you just? Do you know why I though? Because I'm already, I'm already oh, trying geez. to convince my like prepare myself for what that's going to be for the horror. Governor DeSantis still has not said anything. No, not one statement. It's been five days now since the shooting. Not one statement. Not acknowledging that it happened in his state. Like this mother. Is so busy. Oh, I saved that for your daughter. Thanks, I just want I your daughter it. to hear this without me cursing. I, I just, like, all of that. He hasn't said a word. There was a one year old baby that ca was caught in the crossfire. I don't, it, it just boggles my mind that, the, that he cannot pull it together enough to say a statement. Or are we, is this the new norm that we are just living in a world where there's shootings and the government doesn't even acknowledge they don't it? Care. They don't, don't even acknowledge it. That is a frightening place to be. So I remember we were all um, in Tallahassee when the vice president came. I remember oh. seeing yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it was just kind of this epiphany because before she started speaking, she recognized the shooting that had happened the day before. Right. And so when you talk about the new norm, if you start watching these people, before they start speaking, they recognize the shooting that happened the day before. That has now become a part of our culture, mm. where before we accept an award or before we give our speech or before we take the winning team's picture, we stop and we pause and we recognize the shooting from the day before. Oh, there are a hundred people killed in this country every day. A hundred people killed. And I just, I want to kind of give a little shout out to some of the organizations. For example, Change the Ref, if you guys haven't oh, seen love, them or love, followed love, them. Love, Patricia love. and Manny are doing I something. Love so, yeah, come yeah. On podcast. we've, we've yeah. tried, to get, we've tried right. to get Manny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I just, I think that what they do is they bring this, like, appropriate awareness, especially the one oh. about the graduating class when there was nobody sitting there. And the speaker was from the NRA and he was practicing, but he was talking to the amount of children that had been killed. Oh, I mean, yeah. it is just heart wrenching. Oh. And for them to find the strength, there are, see, this is the thing about gun violence prevention. When you're an activist in gun violence prevention, you get to meet all the heroes. And the heroes are the families mm. that pick themselves up Girl. and move forward with Ugh. purpose. I don't even know how and I don't know where they get that resolve, yeah. but here's what I will tell you you will never meet stronger people than families that are moving forward with trying to change the world and make it better for our families. So when we talk about heroes, when we talk about people who are making a difference, start looking at the families of gun violence and see how they, and I don't just mean the ones in the news, right? Like we're talking about families where kids went outside to get something from the convenience store, right. everyday gun violence, yeah, and moms and dads are doing what they can to just help our communities. It is a really scary place, and I'm not trying to give up hope, but I have a kid, 
And yeah. what is our job as moms, you know, in general, we try to make the world better for our kids. I would love to just be in my classroom. I want to kind of go back to yeah. teaching for a second. A lot of times teachers are so overworked and overwhelmed that they can't do everything else or their time is with their family. I don't know how I found this pocket of time to become an activist. I didn't look for it. It sort of just found me. But I will tell you, it is very rewarding to get to meet people like yourselves mm -hmm. and the families and just be able to be a voice because it's not a matter of if your family will be touched by gun violence. It's a matter of when. Yeah. So start planning for it now. And it's unfortunately oh very reactive in our country instead of being proactive. That's the part that we need to be changing. Uh, here's what I think. So here's what I saw. I'm sorry. Yeah, I and how bad I feel for these families is that even if you're not like if you're people are aware that there's shootings and that there's school shootings, but I think what people are desperately unaware of is the fact that so many people who are elected and have power to make these change don't give a shit. Like literally throw them out of hearings and yeah. look at them in the face and don't do a and don't give them thing. time don't, don't do give anything time to meet with literally them literally don't them. do a thing and they have the power and like how frustrating that must be when you have had to bury a child or a loved one who worked at a school or a grocery store at a movie whatever wherever these things are happening now Everywhere. the beach like the fact that now you are face to face with this i this fact that powerful, powerful people care more about being reelected and campaign donations than your, than your child, your child. Like that is insane. And it's so, and, and, and we've talked about that on the podcast too, after the shooting in Tennessee, that what they are doing is building a generation that is yes. coming for you. Thank who God. have had to live in fear who since had to do kindergarten. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 have seen, fifth, and fifth God grade, forbid, yeah. have seen the gun violence face to face like they did in Uvalde where those little kids were oh smearing blood on themselves to look like they were dead in fourth grade. Yeah. And those children, you are building an activist generation that are coming for you, that will not accept the do-nothing politicians that are there now taking the money and going back to their mansions or wherever the hell they are. Shame on you. Shame on you for making this world more unsafe for every single person. I know. And and instead, they, they come up with things like the clear backpacks and, <laughs> and the wands, and they want to put metal detectors. Like, what do you think about that? What do you think about this clear backpack policy that could okay. be Potential. potentially right. implemented in our schools? So it's... I was actually surprised by my reaction to the clear backpack. And I just want to like take a step back and recognize that we have two members on the Broward County School Board who are families of gun violence, right? Mm, and that yeah. they have joined the school board to make change, right? You would assume that I maybe would be outraged by the clear backpacks. The clear backpacks, like I will send my kid wrapped in saran wrap if it <laughs> will make her safe at right. school. The backpack means nothing to me. The part that gets me is that parents are more up in arms about the backpack than yeah, they the, are right. about what's happening in our communities, mm -hmm. in our schools, mm -hmm. in our state, in our country. That is the I don't understand Same. part. Right. So if we could but like channel <laughs> or like we need some like evidence-based solutions here. And it feels like with some of the organizations out there and the people who are getting elected and the local governance that's happening, it feels like we are not getting evidence-based solution. And that, that happens across the board, not just gun violence. And so, you know, when we talk about what's happening in Florida, when we talk about what's happening with kids, I just heard stories about, you know, people having to send, you know, people out of state to take care of certain things because doctors here wouldn't, you yeah, know, right. I mean, I'm not sure if we're going there today or not, but I just, I feel like right now we are swimming against the current mm. and, and we need a little more motor. We need a little more power on it because the current is strong right now. And and so the clear backpacks, they don't bother me. I really, I, I wish that it did. I don't right. think it's a solution. It's not a solution. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, that's how I feel. It's like they're, and, and the same people who are outraged by it, what are you doing? Yeah. What is it that you're, you don't want your kid to have a clear backpack, then why don't you fight to have people elected that will change gun laws right. to keep your kids safe? And also, what's disappointing uh, about the Broward County School Board is Broward is the bluest county in the state. We have a chance as a school board to lead 
in this sort of thing. I know that DeSantis has his target on the back of every single person sitting on that school board, but you have the opportunity to show what we can do here. Like, let's take the initiative to do something real. I, I feel the same way when I was like, clear backpack, who gives a shit? Is it going to keep a gun out of school? I had suggested on the podcast, yeah. like, release the numbers of how many weapons are pulled off of kids in Broward County oh, every day, every year, every oh. month. Pull Pull, show why you are having these meetings and need right. safety precautions. Right. And I know Tina doesn't want uh, uh, metal detectors. Put them in. I don't give a shit. If it's going to keep a gun out of the school, right. then put it in. If you, I, just, clear. I know, but to have children have to walk through like we're going to prison. You well, know what I mean? I got to tell I you, I, 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 I put them in. But I, also, but I agree with what Tina said on the podcast also is that this is a Band-Aid on a goddamn right. avalanche. I, I, yeah. Like, Kids, what are you talking listen, about? Kids will put something down their pants. Yeah. They'll put it in, you know, because the thing that you have the clear backpack, but their band bag, their gym bags are not right. clear. Yeah. So they can still, they will still find a way, just like in Jurassic Park, yeah. right? It's going to find a way. Yeah. So again, getting the guns out of these kids' hands, lowering the age to 18 in high schools. There are children yeah. who are 18 years old. They just old did that. Thanks, legislature. Who are 18. Yeah. You got to be 21 to smoke cigarettes now. Right? Like back in my day, it was 18. Because I'm a. Hey, I mean, uh, I was smoking a cigarette by the dumpster in the morning. Right, yeah, like yeah. Right? <laughs> but but uh, now they've raised the age yeah. to 21 because, you know. For cigarettes? Cigarettes oh, is wow. 21 because, wow. you're, because children, your, your mind is not developed enough to yeah. really make that choice, right? right. But, but you're developed <laughs> enough to like, go fight war. Oh, my God. Or get a gun. Or get a gun. Yeah, right. But you can't drink beer. And you can't, and have, you a can't have a cigarette. It's, it's, oh it's insane. It's insane. Well, it's insane. It was 21 with the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. I know. It yeah, was it 21. Was. And, they and, lowered it down. and like I said, our, our Supreme Leader signed that with a lot of the families standing nearby. Oh, God. And then now, you know, because bibbity bobbity boo you know, we're going to do what we can to get into office. And it, it's, it's ridiculous that an 18-year-old has access to that. Well, and, and the fact that this man would really destroy our entire state with these laws, our education system, mm. for his sole selfish purpose of trying to gain the presidency is disgusting. Yeah. And that if people across the country do not wake up and see, like, here's the microcosm of what will happen nationwide. You know what I mean? You know what? I got to tell you, we talk about this on the I'm podcast scared. all the time. Me too. But you know what? I can only take, we can only take care of Florida. <laughs> Y'all need to get it together <laughs> and don't leave it up to us. We've given it for fair warning. I think DeSantis is a giant red flag, walking red flag. Like you need us to remind you why he's bad. Pay attention. Like we've got, we've got our own to deal with here. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, listen, okay. let's talk about, because I, I was telling you this uh, when we were texting that, that Seminole County's got the, the Seminole County in Florida has some wild uh, school board members. Oh, she got that cool with, those, oh. they, with those giant crazy eye, that crazy oh. eye lady, the one with the movie, right, with the Disney oh, yeah. movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was what I was reading is that the parents there are pushing back, the students are pushing back, and they're going to these school school board meetings and right. they're fighting against the school board, which is fantastic. Yeah. I love it. But and it's I, a conservative it's, district. It's a yeah, conservative right, it is, district, right, it is. and it's a it's a across the board, not just the yeah. liberals that are pissed. Yeah, um, yeah. which okay. is good. Which is great. Right. So there's hope. <laughs> but the one thing I read in the article, which I thought was fascinating, and I kind of knew this about teaching the teaching profession, is that there's teachers quitting in droves in Seminole droves. County. Like droves. 50 to 100 teachers a year are like, peace out, like I'm out. Because of it's almost impossible for them to do their job. Yeah. Right? And so what there's do you so think about fear. this? What do you think about teachers leaving and uh, act, being able to hold on to good teachers it's almost impossible nowadays. Right. It, it's it's like a slip and slide over yeah. here in Florida. Here's what I will say. I like I said, I've been teaching for a long time, and I'm not gonna lie. You know, leaving the profession had crossed my mind yeah. in the past. I have not spoken to one teacher who hasn't felt that way. Um, but I also know that it's extremely important for me to see what's going on. Mm. Boots on the ground. I have to be able to see what's happening in classrooms. I believe strongly that the kids who we are teaching now are just so excited about learning and their future and they're remarkable. And I, at this moment in time, it's the right place for me. 
Um, but I can tell you, I have so many friends who have left the profession. And when we talk about public schools, because I am a public school teacher, mm -hmm. you know, that money is being siphoned off yeah. now into other types of schools. Mm -hmm. And it's just the, um, I mean, the things I put on wish lists or donors choose projects, yeah. which are basically teachers begging for money yeah. for their Jesus. classrooms. Yeah. And now we have, you know, now we have, I don't know if people realize this, but like we have the governor considering lowering the degree for teachers to be an AA, yes. right? which yes. is fun, right? Like just take your two years and go walk into a classroom. And then we, I'm sorry, I didn't want to. Yeah, no, I mean, it's insane to me. They're worried about the children, right? right? But you're not gonna have someone qualified to educate your child. Like, I'm sorry, but I, similar to you, I did four years of college. I did my three years of a master's degree, mm -hmm. all in English, right? I then went back and took all the education classes. Wow. I've done professional development, of course. right? All of the time. Every summer. Every summer you're doing something, <laughs> right? They think that we're sitting around, like we're writing curriculum, we're doing stuff all of the time. And if you're a good teacher, I feel like you're like, yeah, I'll, already I'm like, oh, I got to do this differently next year. How am I going to do this? Like, they're constantly thinking about ways to engage and to do your job well. And you're going to have someone with little to no experience just walk in. I th it's insane to me. You wouldn't have an architect or a doctor or anyone with two years experience doing their job. And then again, it goes back to like this this idea that 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 we're just babysitters. Yeah. I mean, a while ago, I think it was during the pandemic, I came up with the hashtag disposable teachers. Mm. And I kind of feel like that applies today in this place because there are so many opportunities where we're not utilizing the professionals to make the decisions. Yeah. And the, the two-year degree, not knocking a two-year degree, I think no. it's a great start, but I don't want a surgeon operating on me with a two-year degree. Yeah, I agree. But also... What do they expect? I mean, if teachers are quitting in droves, they right. have to take what they can get. I mean, literally last year, he's like, if you're a, a veteran or a retired oh. police officer, you can come work at the schools. And I'm like, but what did they go but, to school? What what did they do? What are you talking about? I just, I just don't get it. Like, and for a math teacher, right? If yeah. you're going to be a math teacher, you better know math. And two years of college is not enough right. credits. Like, even for English, like, I, I cannot tell you how many classes of theory and literature and and time periods i mean you know i took a whole class just on chaucer alone you Ooh, know that's I mean? impressive oh, right? Tales, like, right? Brad, absolutely. Brad, 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 Brad. but like chaucer. I, I feel like i feel like <laughs> i didn't know there was going to be a test right. tina i had no idea <laughs> but know. i feel exactly. like i know my subject inside and out because you're professional right? And I know writing, I know rhetoric, like I know it. And I feel like I can teach that very well to students. And I wouldn't want my kids sitting in a class with someone who doesn't know even like the period of the Harlem Renaissance or, you know what I mean? That doesn't know like shifts and movements because all of that has to do with society, right? Mm. All of that, that it's, everything is connected. Wait, are you allowed to teach Harlem Renaissance? Is that a... I don't know. Yeah, that's the part where it's, which really scares yeah. me. That's yeah. the part. Like, because I, I think about that. If I'm going to teach Langston Hughes, who I love, right, right. Um, how do you talk about Langston Hughes and you don't talk about Jim Crow? Like, he's got a whole set of like absolutely like commentary articles that he wrote for uh, a Chicago newspaper that it's all about Jim Crow. His poems, like, it's about race. How do you teach that? It's like the Amanda Gorman poem. Yeah. Like you, well, you're, you know like she's you the cannot... number one bestseller on Amazon right now. Shout out to Gorman. Good for her. But like, how do you, uh, like, I, I don't know. Well, it's, a, and also, I mean, I'm sure that there's, a, I mean, we know how they like to plan long term. I'm sure there is a long term plan of dumbing down society, right? No, I really think that's what do it is. That. There's although, no brain drain in I don't Florida. Know, although I don't know how much further we can go. I mean, how much further? I mean, they are Florida, right? I and mean. we've elected DeSantis twice. So, like, I mean, how much further do you want me. us to go? Where there's going to be an entire generation of Floridian children who, or Florida children, who don't understand race and diversity? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's going to be a real thing. That's what they want? And teachers who can't really articulate what's happening? I mean, it's, there's a level of, you know, it's a lack of respect for teachers, a lack of education, although they're all highly educated, so... That's the other thing. They all went to Ivy League schools. They all yeah. went to, you know, they, what, they don't what was get good it. for them isn't good for everybody right. else. Right. Yeah. 
And the same thing, like all the money that's being siphoned into the private schools. Those private schools are not banning books. Right. Those private schools are still having conversations about real history. And it's the, 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 the people with the money and the elite are going to continue to rise up and have all of the access, and everyone else is going to be left behind. And the private schools do not have to take every child. And right. that happens, right? I just, I, I, my biggest concern is actually not the book ban. My mm -hmm. biggest concern is not teacher pay. My biggest concern is that I was not allowed to teach health to my second graders this year. Oh my, my biggest God. concern is that the best thing I ever saw come out of Broward schools last year um, the Safer Smarter Kids by Senator Book. Mm. I was not able to use that. And I know that that program is going to help children to stay safe. I know so that that what, program. What's part of that program? So Safer, I, I'm not an expert on it, but I did uh -huh. utilize it with my kids last year, the Safer Smarter program. It teaches kids about just basically being empowered and safe in their own skin, about appropriateness, about um you know, not all grownups are um, able to sort of be in charge of you. You have to talk to a trusted adult. So touching things like that. It's but it's handled in such a in such a sort of a unbelievable way. It's mm -hmm. super age appropriate. Um, my kids were super excited about it. The program itself was well written. I know that that program is helping people, and I I wanted to do it so badly. And anytime I reached out to Broward. It was like, well, we have to hold off because of the law. We have to hold off. And then it was all of a sudden there was no health. Right. And we have kids in yeah. Broward. This whole year. We're not allowed to talk about um, periods, I think, till yeah. fifth grade. Meanwhile, yeah. I spoke to several right. doctors, pediatricians, and, and every year kids are getting their periods earlier yeah. and earlier. So, I mean, we have kids that when you talk There's about kids the, who are who are nine and ten years old getting their period. Yeah. And, and we have kids in Broward that are not going to have the tools necessary to stay safe because of the lack of this program. So it's just, that to me is scarier than not having access to a book. Although they need the book too. Please don't um, misunderstand what I'm saying here. But I just, I think we have to like holistically look at what is happening and start addressing each and every problem. And I know that people are angry and I know that people wanna like do things on social media, but that's not it. I don't think that the mass reality of, or the mass large amount of people realize that like if you were vote by mail, that was purged. You right. have to go back online right. and do it again now. People don't realize that, no, right? They, they think, oh, I, I voted by mail last time, so I'm fine. Like, no, system is clean. Start yep. over. Yep. So they have to start doing that now. Like if, if you would like to deal with women's health care, there's an abortion ballot, you know, to get the abortion initiative on the ballot. I almost brought them today, but I know you guys already signed, right? <laughs> oh, I have not signed it. Oh my God, I'm bringing you one. I have, I have like a stack. I'm, I'm right. going yeah. to a meeting next week to be a part yeah. of the, a move, uh, some sort of movement to be right. involved in it. So I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I just, you know, and, and the reason I'm segueing is because I had this, this brief stint last year, mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Freed appointed me to the Florida Commission yes. on the Status of Women last yes. year. Yes. And I was on it for like, a, a little bit of time um, and and that was mostly that was mostly people in this state who maybe didn't align with my viewpoint but we worked together mm -hmm. and gathered data about what women and children and families need in this state and and unfortunately I don't have the opportunity to serve on it anymore but I can tell you that we have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. we have a lot of work to do and it's not just education there's a lot going on right now, as everybody knows, with women, with safety, so with much. education, so with being able to afford being here. I mean, when I left Sarah's um, kickoff, my shoes broke. And I'm like, why am I wearing 20-year-old shoes? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because I can't afford new ones. That's why. In the parking lot, I'm like holding a broken shoe. Look at my gorgeous nails. You see that? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's some maintenance that has to happen. We're yeah. running out of money. And it's like, if teachers can't survive on what they're being paid, if girls are getting their period in third and fourth grade and we can't talk about it, if kids I mean, are not just... empowered to stay safe, whether it's in their classrooms, they're huddling in a bathroom, and we didn't even talk about what it's like to take a math test after you've been like hiding in a bathroom, what if right. an active shooter is coming? Yeah. Like, there's, I always talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Like, if kids don't feel safe, they cannot learn. So, we are debilitating a generation of children. 
without the access to the books. I heard you guys talking about the library access. Like my grandma was a children's librarian. You have to be able to have access to the materials. Right. And that doesn't mean every book is appropriate for a kid. Like of I'm course. not naive, but that is not the library's job to decide. That is the parent's job to decide in that moment. And you don't get to decide for every parent. You don't get to decide for every family. And that is the part that is infuriated. P people are overstepping and we are not coming up with evidence-based solutions. And we're also, not, like not. I said, on and, it's, the and, it's one, last and week. it's one person. But also, like the school board can say no. Right. You can say Pungu, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, no, <laughs> that's, 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 that's not the gonna thing. ban this. That's the thing. Like, who are on these committees right. on the school board that are just checking off? Like with that with with the, the, the Amanda Gorman poem. Yeah. Right. Who that woman submitted a form. Okay, but that woman, someone had to approve the form, right? That, that woman had been thrown out of other school board right, meetings right, for disorderly conduct. Right, I mean, right. in any population, you're going to have outliers. Right, but, but we are someone, empowering someone, our outliers. Yeah, yes, someone that. said, "Sure, lady, this is accurate." She had fault, wrong information on. But the you form. mean Oprah didn't write the book? Yeah, I mean, but it's <laughs> also it's also years of like online cancel cancel culture right. where the school board anybody elected is like, I don't want to cause a stir so let's just get rid of the poem let's just get rid of the book yeah, it's the and squeaky now, wheel gets the yeah. grease but and we need to be the squeakier wheel well here's the deal we're loud right i mean there's nobody sitting at this no table one's who's ever told not. Me i was loud before oh right <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot i mean we're loud but we need more people we need yeah. more people to have reached their threshold and to start doing things about it that's honestly it. Yeah. Because sitting back and clicking like like or sending it to your friend isn't doing anything. Yeah. So like channel that energy, channel that I'm upset about clear backpack energy and go do something. And what kind of things can you do? Get involved in local politics, turn up at different um, types of rallies, make sure that you're registering to vote by mail, get friends to go with you, come up with a plan. I know this sounds like the same thing we say all the time, but it makes a difference. If you look at, and I, I saw it earlier today, you were looking at um, something on your laptop and I saw a name about voters of tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you look at what the kids are doing, the, ki the kids are on right. I I'm oh. telling you, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. I'm saying kids. that these kids are going to push their way through and they are not, they're not asking you permission. They're just going to vote against you and that's it. I mean, if we... The elections that had happened in November were on the the backs of these of the youth that were voting. And what was the reaction with the Republicans? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we want to change the the right. age of the voting the voting age. We're gonna require a certain ID. You can't vote here if you're in college. We right. can be somewhere else. While you're like, in college, you yeah. can't vote. You have to go back yeah, home, which is probably this? during the middle of finals yeah, or something. Just making I it know. the most difficult process. Yeah, yeah it's them. in the middle of their first sem well not first semester but the first semester of the year. Right. Yeah. It's um, almost like there's be, a plan to make things harder for yeah. people to do what they need to do. It's insane. It is. It's and insane. we have to start holding the people accountable who are doing that. If and it's against their constitutional right. Yeah. They have the right to vote. Yeah. And if so all these people... Wait, am I allowed to teach that? Am I allowed to teach that? Am I allowed to teach that? Sorry. No, you're not. You're not allowed <laughs> to teach We're not allowed to teach anything. Jesus. I will Even say... Even holding the... Like, teachers are going along or doing what they're told because they have to make a living and support their families. Like, you're really saying, do you want a job or do you want to do this? Like, the how... This is ridiculous it's ridiculous I think that you know there's a lot of complacency not because people want to be but because they have to be yeah. it is like it is hard out there yeah. right it I is hard imagine. and and you know although it's not much I mean listen my pension just got turned over to the great supreme leaders buddy his yeah. crony with the That's highest right. bid yeah. so not only do I not get paid during my professional career but now my retirement is hooked it's on risk. the it's at, it's, it's at the back of his friend you know right. it's a little scary it's actually it's a lot scary I'm being yeah. I, I have to joke about it because if we don't laugh it's gonna not going to be okay. We'll be curled up in the corner. Like self-care number one. Rule number yeah. one, self-care. And I mean that. And I tell people that. Because if you're not okay, you can't go out there and make the world a better place. And I have that sign hanging in my classroom. I teach second grade. I'm like, you can make, you know, like, you can change the world. And the yeah. kids... At first, they walk in and they probably think it's corny, but we yeah. study. We study what's happened in history. We study people, mm. all standards based. Everybody, <laughs> and like by the end of it, we're like, oh yeah, you can change the world, right? And 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 I I hope that it's making an impression. I'm not trying to make children feel 
like they are helpless or hopeless. It's exactly the opposite. I, I do believe in these kids and I, I think that we're going to be okay. I've seen the pendulum swim, swing before. Right. Tina, you've seen it in education, right? Like yeah. all of a sudden ability grouping and then yeah. it's like, no, we want, we want it the same it way. It always changes. It swings. So yeah. I feel like the pendulum has to swing. Yeah. Like how much I more mean, over it can it, it go? Can't. It can't. It <laughs> can't go over anymore. It's almost broken. It's like the it's like the ride from that the pirate ship yes. ride at, at the carnival. <laughs> yo, you know? yo, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's madness. Oh, but um, Tracy. listen, I'll say to you too. I'll say this. Yeah. Uh, it. W I would not be uh, upset with you if you're like, I can't do this anymore. I need to get a job that I'm not at risk, and that like, it's not abandoning students, which it might seem like. Right. It's, yeah. There is a point where you have to worry about yourselves because you're in this broken system and nobody's coming to save it like at least they don't have enough power so you know also think about that because oh, that's I know. very I know. sweet of you to empower me in that like, way is, right i'm sorry but like this is craziness this is crazy yeah, yeah. and uh, you you know that teacher who showed that disney movie is she's leaving she's yeah. leaving she's she was like Young. I hope she gets a book deal. I hope right. she gets something. I, <laughs> I hope mean, she gets something. I yeah. hope she finds a way to parlay it's that just situation into something optimistic and something that will pay. But I think a, okay. a lot of young teachers are feeling disheartened, and we need young teachers. Yeah. Like those are the teachers at the school that do all the things, and you know, absolutely. I, I love seeing young new teachers right but can we also shout out old teachers and like myself yeah. because you like, guys look like young teachers oh that's so I sweet <laughs> oh, thank you the teachers, like, yeah like the veteran teachers like they're amazing yeah. too but you know we, we veteran teachers are yeah eventually going to leave and we need to have an engaged and excited we, we need people excited to want to come into the, to this profession. We're going to have education departments that aren't going to have anybody in it. Right. Like, because people, why would they choose this for a career? Yeah, it needs to be re-energized. And yeah. I do know that Broward and some other places in the state have been going out of the country to look for educators. And I understand that. But I would recommend that we fix the problems here so that Correct. we can be employing people in Florida who need jobs. I would recommend that that be the way that we resolve it. And I do, I do strongly believe that it... I have to. I, I don't know where this little hope glimmer moment comes from, but I refuse to walk around angry all the time. Like I refuse to be, wake yeah. up and be upset. I did that. It was not helpful. No. It was not healthy. So we have to think about like, okay, we're going to be all right. Here's how we're going to no, do it. I mean, I wake up angry every oh, single no! day. Oh, no. Tracy. I mean, Tracy. and also, yeah, we're going to say goodbye, but yeah. also... Uh, you just said that you listened to me or yelling at the library, so that means you heard me saying some awful names about one of our representatives. <laughs> so I hope your daughter didn't hear that part. If she did, I'm so uh, sorry. Not at all. Here's okay. here's the deal. I mean, <laughs> nothing says cool like a library card that upsets people. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's yes. what I'm saying. They're trying to make this cool to read books. And this guy's like, take their money. Good grief. It's I so mean. ridiculous. I can't wait to get this library card. That's why I'm, I'm going. I'm getting it. Do it. You will. Yeah. All the cool kids them. are doing yeah. it. Yeah. And my kids. They're going to have it too. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> That's how you know you have a teacher mom. I'm getting you a bad book library card. <laughs> and you will like it. And you're going to yeah. show everybody. <laughs> Well, thank you. This was so much fun. This is great. My God, we talked forever, and I'm yes. so happy about I'm it. I'm used so to much. talking a lot. I talk all day, every day. I love it. <laughs> and I like so... hearing about what's happening in the front line, and you're all you're doing is confirming things Tina's been screaming at me Tina for knows. four years. Tina yeah. knows. We have, like, this secret special sauce. Yes. We know yeah. it's good. We know it's up. But and you know what? it's a pleasure. And so, so much. And such great you. advice for people to get out yeah, and, get and take action and get involved. So thank right. you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. And we got you this. you for doing all of your teaching. I mean, yes. you know, these kids are lucky to have you. So I'm sure lucky. you know that. I just feel like if I get to smile at the end of the day when leaving my classroom, Aww. it is all worth it. Also, if you could pay us more, that would be helpful. Yeah. Yes. You know what would make me happy? A fat paycheck. Yeah, yes. that would be nice. I just want to throw this like fun fact out to leave everybody with yeah. because when I tell people this, their eyes kind of roll to the back of their head. They have no idea. So I mentioned my mom was a teacher. 20 years ago. Oh, no. Ready? 20 years ago, my mother made $20,000 more a year than I do now. What? Ding, 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 ding. More? 20 years ago, yeah. $20,000 more than I do yeah. now. So when we talk about we're not paying teachers, like I want to- they got rid of the step They program. got rid of the step oh, program. Got rid of I'm not the, trying yes. to like open up a whole new box, yes. but I'm just like, yes. when we say teachers are not paid, like 
They you know what? Us. My it's, husband. Yeah, it's it's bad. So we've got to that bet on is that. Crazy. My just fun fact. Fun fact. In, wow, in yeah. the old step when they made the switch. Oh. And he went. It was like eight years where he didn't get a raise right. at all. Right. Eight wow. years where it did not go up. When I say did not go up, he did not. Nothing changed. Wow. Right. For eight years. So it's kind of hard to keep us if you don't pay us. Just yeah. a little fun fact. I yeah. mean, this <laughs> is crazy. Yeah. All right. So oh, I love you guys so love much. You. Keep going. Uh, keep thank doing. You, thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. And this is awesome. Thank you for coming on thank here you. and driving all the way out here to see us. Yes. And we're going to put it on YouTube. I mean, it looks like it. All you're seeing is like the side of my face. Do yeah, so I look sad. okay? Is my hair okay? Yeah. I'm like a Saturday sleeping pajama girl. No. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure we'll see you around. Yes. I think so. All right. So do I, I like get up and walk out now? You guys keep yeah. going. Yeah, we're just going to say bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. bye. bye.